Hi and welcome. Today I will be covering top 10 test taking strategies for the PMH NP exam. What do we know? We know the exam is testing your ability to think critically. And critical thinking involves observation, deciding what is important, looking for patterns and relationships, identifying the problems, transferring knowledge from maybe one situation to another, applying that knowledge, discriminating between possible choices or courses of action, and also evaluating according to the criteria that is established. Let me begin by saying don't wait until the last minute to prepare for this exam. Don't overdo it either. Set aside specific time to review for the test and stop when you reach the end of that time. There are 175 questions on this exam and of these, 150 are scored questions and 25 are pre-test questions that are not scored. You cannot tell the difference between the pre-test questions to the actual scored questions. So it's important that you answer all the questions. And remember, it's only 150 questions that are going to be scored. How well you do on the pre-test question does not affect your score overall. So my first test taking strategy is start from the last question first. Well, you might be thinking why? Time starts from the maximum. So they're giving you the max time and then it starts to count down. So if you look at the timing, you have three hours, that's 180 minutes, 175 questions divided into 180. That's about a minute to answer a question. This is an example of what the screen would look like and the time starts with 180 minutes and counts down. So if you have trouble figuring out how much time is left, I suggest starting from the last question and working your way to the top one. There is that half an hour time they give you, which is to read through the instructions. You can use this time to jot down any notes if you needed to on a piece of paper that they provide. So I want to encourage to take 60 seconds in answering each question. When you take the practice exams, try to spend about one minute to on each question. Obviously, you may answer some questions quicker than that, but no, it will take more time to answer others. So 60 seconds is a good goal to shoot for. And when you can't answer some questions, you should avoid taking more than two minutes per question. If you have sped through a series of questions under a minute, you'll have accumulated enough extra time for the harder questions. But even so, you should set a limit. Two minutes is a long time, so if you can't figure out the answer by then, you likely don't know the answer and strategically you need to move on. So now, if you have completed answering all 175 questions and have extra time, remember you can go back. I don't necessarily encourage this, but this is your personal decision. Test taking strategy number two. The question components. There is STEM, there is question itself that it's asking, so you want to read the question carefully. There are distractors and there are keywords. When trying to improve your test taking skills, it may be helpful to identify the components of the multiple choice question. So the STEM is the part that asks the question. In addition to the correct answer, there will also be the case, which is a patient situation or scenario. There are also distractors, which are choices that are actually wrong or not the best answer. It's easier to analyze a question once you have identified each part. Remember to read the stem at least twice to thoroughly understand what the question is asking. I know one of the most effective strategies involves focusing on the keywords. For instance, if the question asks for an intervention, look for the answer that is an intervention. Test taking strategy number three, use the highlighter and look for the same or synonym words in the questions and the answers. Doing so will help you have a better understanding of the layout of the test and how the question is presented. Same word from the test question can be seen in the right answer, so pay close attention to repeated words or synonyms that appear in both the questions and answer. For example, for a question that contains signs, the right answer may include symptoms. Try to figure out what is really being asked. It seems simple, but be sure to practice breaking down questions and understanding what the question is asking. Once you fully understand the question, it will be easier for you to answer that question. For instance, if a test question asks, which of the following would you do first? Know that all of the answers are things that would be done. In that case, prioritize and look at patient safety issues while doing so. Don't jump to the conclusions about what the question is asking. Read each question carefully before answering. Test taking strategy number four is to flag questions. Yes, 
you can flag questions on this exam. Don't overthink it. Don't second guess what is being asked. The first answer is usually the correct one if you have taken the time to reason through the question. And if you find you are taking a long time on one question, flag it and go back to it later. Answer all of the questions and guess if you have to. There's no penalty for wrong answers. And remember, review all the flag questions. Make sure you answer them all. Don't change your answers unless you are absolutely sure that you chose a wrong answer. Test taking strategy number five, cross out or strike out answers that don't belong. Do you remember when you were in nursing school and you took those foundational classes? Well, don't forget those foundational classes. Know the basics about your new role, including when to refer, know about the health policy, the basic advocacy rights, research, and leadership. Remember to look for opposite answers. If two of the answer choices have opposites, like increased heart rate or decreased heart rate, one of the two choices is usually the correct answer. Eliminate the distractors first in the answer choices and then focus on any option that might be correct. Read the questions and answers, then start eliminating the distractors that are not correct. Okay, for instance, if the question asks for an intervention but some of the distractors are signs and symptoms, eliminate those distractors and focus on the one distractor that most closely resembles the right answer. Test taking strategy number six, look for cues and answers that lead to incorrect or correct answer choices. Be aware of the absolute everything, all, nothing, etc. They're usually the wrong answers. For example, a patient scheduled for electroshock therapy tells the PMHNP, I'm so afraid of how much this will hurt. The most appropriate response is, A, don't worry, you won't feel a thing. B, I'm sure your doctor explained this treatment. C, tell me what you are thinking is going to happen. Or D, electroshock therapy is a common treatment. Read the entire question before answering. Read the entire question before focusing on the answer. When you don't thoroughly read the question, you may miss a keyword or a phrase and misinterpret the question's focus. Whether you're taking a practice test or the real test, make sure you understand what the question is really asking, guys. By the way, the correct answer to the example question is C. Tell me what you are thinking is going to happen. Test taking strategy number seven is umbrella answers. When answering a question, if you note that there are more than one option appears to be correct, look for the umbrella option, so also known as a global option or known as comprehensive option. The umbrella option is one that is a general statement and it may contain the ideas of the other options within it. The umbrella option will be the correct answer, so don't second guess what is being asked and don't bring your personal experience into the question scenario. Test taking strategy number eight, use the paper given at the testing center and time yourself. At home, practice, practice, practice. Create yourself a dunk list. Some of the things you might want to jot down are maybe the lab values, inducers and inhibitors mnemonic, maybe even the meds that cause depression or mania. You might even want to add some theories such as a system theory, strategic or structure theory, along with the associated words. It's so important to know that for the exam. Also, I've made a video on the scales that are needed to know for the exam. You can also watch that. You might even want to write down the scales on this dump list of yours. There are many sites that list mnemonics for psychiatric disorders and medications and assessment. So when you get into the testing center, remember you should have that piece of paper that you can write down the ones that you struggle with. And don't forget about the cranial nerves as well. Okay, here we go. Test taking strategy number nine. Priority is usually concerning safety. And remember, safety for the patient and others is usually the right answer. Using prioritization techniques, questioning, using words such as initial, first, and best are asking for your prioritizing skills. The choices are usually all correct, but only one should be done first. When prioritizing, you should consider the following, your ABCs. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the nursing process. Remember, assessment versus intervention. Narrow down and make the educated guesses. The best answer or the best choice is going to be advocating for the patient or the nursing profession. The best answer choices are going to focus on being culturally sensitive and competency for patient. And last but not least, test taking strategy number 10, assessment versus intervention answer choices. 
As you go through these test questions, ask yourself, is it the question asking me for assessment or intervention? Are the answer choices focused on assessment or intervention? Narrow it down, cross out the answers, and finalize the correct choice. So guys, if you want me to create more content and more videos, go ahead and click that like button, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.